ladies and gentlemen, it's time to face Brewers House Party. And a very good afternoon. It's another weekend. It's locked down yet again. And uh, so hopefully we're going to say hello to you, see who's coming. Tony Thomas has quickly come on board. Linda, hello. What brought you together, Linda? And Linda Thomas, hello there. Hope you're not the same couple there. A very good afternoon to you. And um, I'll, let me just put on my uh, cot so I can see anything's coming in. I should have said it. So uh, Paul Barker, lovely Paul. Paul Olds, hello, my darling. Say hello to everyone. Andrew Covey, yes, I see you'll come on. Kate Lee Chapel, hello, Lee. Jim Hampshire, we must talk to you about West Ham, Jim. Irene Smith, Ian Jacko, how are you, Jacko? Nice to see you. Tony Monk, hello, mate, how are you? Lynn Hawker, lots of people. Caroline Banks, lovely sister Christine. Stuart, oh, you're flying in now, and very nice to see you all. Robert Greengrass, how are you, dear? And uh, Jay, nice to meet you all. Have a, a lovely weekend in front of you. And we've got some people, we've got some people on Brewers House Party today. Um, I'm very excited with a, with a couple, just to talk to them. I, I was hoping to get Jack on, but he's just rang me to say I'm in the garden, in the garden, and his phone's bad. So uh, I don't think we're going to see Jack today. And uh, very disappointed in Jack. I will be talking to him about it because obviously he's our future, isn't he, Nigel? Nigel is looking after proceedings today. So, uh, Nigel, I've deliberately put on, if those can't see, the Team Nars. Reason is that because it's somebody's birthday. There are people's birthdays today. But before we bring them on, let's say hello quickly to the people who are joining us. That's Keith Isaacs and Ian Burfield. There we are. That's Keith and that is Ian. Afternoon. Thank you for joining me. Are you doing much in lockdown? <laughs> Ian? Not much. I've, I've been, well, I was relatively creative the first two lockdowns, but this one I'm just, I right. thought, you know what? I've done enough. Let's just sit and watch some telly. I know we're all doing that, but of course, in the end, the TV, we suddenly realised we've watched everything. Well, there's a few, there's a few new bits. I don't watch yeah. that much, so I'm kind of catching up on stuff from 10 years ago. I know, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ian Burfield. I will be talking very shortly. Ian, thanks for coming on, and I'm very Pleasure. excited to see you. As is you, Keith Isaac. How are you? Good to see you. Looks like you've been eating, it, uh, Keithy. No, I'm no, working on the stuff. I've Have you it, no, I'm losing weight, I think. Well, what, what are you doing to lose weight? It was it was your wife's birthday recently, wasn't it? Tomorrow. Oh, it's coming up, Joe, isn't it? Tomorrow, tomorrow. So a big happy birthday to you, uh, to Joe then. And I will Thanks, talk mate. to you. In fact, I'll do the birthdays and I'll come back to you and Ian very shortly. Thanks for joining us. So, yes, we have got some birthdays. And why not? Team Nars, it's Steve Madam's birthday today. Now, Steve, look at that. Can you zoom up that, Nigel? Because Steve, we remember Steve in the summer looking on the left. But look at that, two stone. Keithy, I hope you remember that, Keith. Two stone. He's lost. Happy birthday to you. And, of course, he looks after, um, there he is, paramedic. And, plus, of course, looking after our uh, NARS, Norfolk First Response. We've raised a lot of money for, for them. That's Andrew. Andrew Hicks, happy birthday to you, mate. A lovely happy birthday. Love for, from your family. Now, Anthony's the one with the dog. It's his birthday. Anthony, look, that's some of our girls from our team. There we are. So, Mia, Fia, Chester Barnes had his birthday this week. The uh, legendary Chester Barnes, one of our oldest friends. It's got to be my first job. First job. There we are. Glenn Michael Ford, Norman Wisdom. Glenn was just a, week, a year before I joined Potters. That's over 35, 36 years ago. Kim Kelly, happy birthday to you, darling. Have a lovely day. Will you have it? And that's Lenny Humberstone with his girls. Lenny, have a lovely birthday, mate. Happy birthday to you. Um, who else? That's uh, Scott Botel. Scott with all the people, not the girls there. And uh, obviously with Jill and Bill and uh, Tarek. That goes back, Tarek. I remember you as a tiny little guy, little boy. Now look at you. Gorgeous lady with you, Tarek. But happy birthday to you. Tracy, a big happy birthday to you, darling. Happy birthday. I think we've done all the birthday on pictures, have we, Nigel? 
I think we have. But there are other birthdays like, um, let me have a look, we have Emma Dixon's, Doreen Roberts. I gave her a call yesterday. Doreen, happy birthday to you. I was trying to do a selfie on the phone because I rang her up and she had her curlers on. I was absolutely gutted. I, I couldn't catch it as I was moving it up. I'm used to this on the things like that. So, Doreen, a big happy birthday to you. Um, who else? Oh, Dennis's birthday, John Deacon's birthday, Susan Armstrong's birthday tomorrow. It's happy birthday. And uh, there we are. Look at that picture. Guess what day weekend it would be? At Potter's this particular weekend, it would have been our uh, Facebook fan book weekend. And that's a little picture that Carol put on from last year's group of nutcases. They're all nutcases. Um, we have a fantastic weekend normally with them. So uh, from Carol Walk to all the people there. Linda G saying, Lenny and Nanny watching. So hello, Linda. Lenny, how are you, mate? He, I hope you've joined in with the pom-pom. Linda Mutt, she looked like a big happy sunshine today. Well, we've got to try and cheer ourselves up. Lynn Hawker, yes, our social media weekend. Would have been fun, wouldn't it? But as Mike and Tara and everyone has said, even Buzz have said, look, when we get back, we will have one mighty big party. And we certainly will. So uh, to you, it's not on this weekend, but uh, we'll be looking forward to catching up eventually to all of you. Um, is there anyone that I've not forgotten? Uh, I know June Nolan. She used to work at Pods. It was her uh, birthday as well. Steve Adams, uh, take care, mate. And he's normally out there. Girl pedophile, that colour really suits you. It's not it's just yellow. It's yellow. I've got other things on Jack. Is Jack looking for his imaginary girlfriend again? Don't talk about it, Jack. Unbelievable, isn't it? Just, just text me now. No, I've got, I've got no signal. No signal. He ever texts me. So, Lynn Ainge from Ireland, hopefully, and uh, looking great. I hope you're saying that's me, Lynn. I hope you're saying that's me. But to everyone else saying hello. Karen Parr, hello, darling, to you. Yes, I know, girls. Joe Hunt, the vegan diet. This is the vegan diet, mate. This is, look at it. Can you not tell? I'm breathing in now, just make so. Joe Wicks and the vegan diet. That's what I've been up to. Right, so look, I have got some uh, friends who are coming on. Let me have a quick chat to, um, I don't know, quick chat to Ian. I've been dying to talk to Ian. Ian uh, Burfield, everyone. And uh, what did we say? Ian, uh, that's Keith. But last weekend was Eric Helen's transfer golden wedding anniversary. Never Potters. So uh, visiting Potters several times a year. So there we are. And got it. Keithy, you come on. Hello, Keith. Hello, mate. How are you, dear? All good. All good. And, it, and it's your Joe's birthday tomorrow. How old is Joe tomorrow? 60. Yeah. 6 0 tomorrow, Mark. Should have been, should have been with you. Yeah. Oh, no, Words to be. I know. I bet. Well, I keep getting lot, so many texts. From gutted people, especially yeah. now. We're thinking, are oh, we going to be up for Easter? We're crossing our fingers and hoping we are. Yeah, yeah it's hard one. It's not easy, yeah. Mark. Is it? Right. It's not easy. It's not. But it's all the vaccinations. All waiting. We all, we've got to get our vaccinations, haven't we? Yeah, exactly right. I know, mate. So look, Tottenham didn't do very well, did they? Tottenham were abysmal, weren't they? Three years at Tottenham support us. Um, also looks after MCA Children's uh, Cancer Charities that I'm a patron of as well. Yeah, uh, how, I, I just go back to Tottenham while I can tease you a little bit because West Ham won, as you know. Yeah. Are, yeah, we, above, he's, he's, are we above Tottenham now? You, you are, and he's, he's got something going, and not he? He's got something going there, Moyes, so I have to uh, say that. He has got something going, but I mean, we're not we're, we're not going to jump on that seat because we're flying high. I'm not going to sort of tease you about that, but um, yeah, we, we can uh, say, well, that's just probably as high as ever we're going to get. But how good is that that we got to fourth place? He's doing well, He's doing yeah. Well. I mean, this time last year, you know, we were bottom. Do you know that? I know, yeah, no, you were really struggling, really yeah, struggling. Really struggling. The Moisey's done well, and I don't even like him that much. <laughs> Really? No, well, no, I'm not a big fan of Moisey because of some of the strange things he used to do. But he's actually got his team working well, so bless him. He's doing well. And uh, so about Mourinho, he's just not doing it for you, is he? No, he's uh, Mark. It's uh, I mean, I think of it. He's a top manager. He's a capable. We know his, it. his record says it all. But they, they, just, they, they just need better players, don't they? They need more. They've got a beautiful ground now. They've got a, a fantastic uh, training ground. I've not seen it, but it's phenomenal, apparently. But, uh, yeah, he just needs players. He needs better players. Yeah. Better players. 
I say Jesse Lingard's coming to West Ham, isn't he? That's great. Yeah. And Martin Ruby, Champions League. I can feel it in your log. I bet you do. I'll let you come back on. I have a quick little message to Ian when you can, Martin. So listen, Keithy, how is yes. it? How are you coping with? Um, I've, I've never sort of delved into much of what your your normal job is, Keith, because I've only just really known your father and always had so much fun teasing you. And we've got involved in MCA yeah. charity. So do you want to explain it a little bit? Keith? Yeah, you dropped out there, Mark. What was that last bit? I said, are you going to explain a little bit of MCA charities? And Yeah, yeah, we, we, we started it up. It's 10 years this year we started it on the back of Mickey Adams. My father-in-law did a, did a load of charity work back in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, we lost Mickey to a brain tumour in, as I say, 10 years ago this year. And yeah. We know a few people and a few people in sport, yourselves, people, capable people. So we decided to follow on with what Mickey was doing, get get some people around us. And to be fair, Mark, it's, it's growing into something that never, ever did I ever think it would get that big. We're all volunteers. We yeah. we pay no one. You know that. We do. Yeah. I don't think we give you any uh, – we don't even give you petrol money to drive down to Langdon Hills for our golf day, do we? No, you don't, Keith. But thank you. <laughs> but, um, Just no, remind me. Yeah. It's been very. It's been going very well. It's it's predominantly Essex uh, and East London, which was where Mickey was was born. We support children with uh, brain tumours predominantly, but but all forms of cancer, Mark, and we do that in a number of ways. We give respite. We spend serious money with hospitals if the mm. hospitals think they need something that they. That they can't get through the NHS, then then we'll raise money and 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 spend some good money with them. Thirty, forty k is what we we sort of do. Um, but really, looking after young children, I have some some real big highs. But as you can imagine, in dealing with children with cancer, there's oh, some man. very big there's some very big lows. Yeah, very much so. Very much yeah. so. And, so and, it's. Um, and this year, of course, we've had, I'll just kill that, we've had the issue with uh, COVID as our revenue stream is non-existent, Mark. It's, no, we I know. Can, we we cancelled everything. Any fundraiser we had, we stopped. We tried to get a drive-in pantomime off the ground. Thank and, you, Nigel. Uh, really, yeah, we tried to get that off the ground in Dagenham uh, yeah. for all the children at Christmas, drawing in Basildon. Queens and South End Hospital, but we couldn't even get that in the end. It it just we we couldn't get it past the council, and rightly no. so. They 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 sort of said to us, "Look, we we really can't license it." So everything we've tried, every twist and turn, we've had to stop. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not you know the charity sits on a nice bit of money. We 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 spend it wisely. We spend it in the right areas. Yeah, and you're very, very cautious and you talk to the hospitals and you even talk to the wards and you don't actually just say, hand some money over, what is it you need? Yeah. What is it for? Yeah. And we've had some great pictures back on that. And yeah. even James Hearn's been with you, hasn't he? Uh, Who's part. that? James Hearn. Yeah, yeah, bless him. James has been, uh, you know, uh, I mean, to be fair, Mark, the whole pot of, the pot of family, the pot of foundation, whenever you've come to our golf days, You've always brought something down with you that we've had, that we've able to auction, and you know what you're like. You auction things twice when when you're really doing it once, <laughs> um, and raise raise some serious money on some of the breaks that you've brought down. Yeah. Um, but James, yeah, bless his heart, he's he, he's he's never said no to us. Um, and when we when we've rung him, he's always picked the phone up. You always will. You pick the phone up all the time anyway. Mm. But uh, no, James has uh, has been good to us has helped us out and, and, and helped us work a room because when you're raising money on a, on a voluntarily basis, which is how we do it, you need people that can get that little bit of extra out of an audience yeah. um, with, without overstepping the mark, without being too aggressive with them. No, it's, it's to trying to have a bit of fun with it. And, of course, it's some great interesting. I mean, quite you've had Harry Redknapp, haven't you, uh, yes. come to speak, and that was a wonderful time we had yeah. um and many more you? Do you, you, know, do you, 
do you know what, Mark? It, it, you, you hear footballers now. We were talking about Spurs and West Ham earlier about how they get criticised for for the money they earn, and and you know. But I have to say, we've had some. We've had Barry Fry, we've had uh, Teddy Sheringham, uh, Martin Allen. All of them have, have all come down to our play. Mar uh, Martin Tyler have yes. all come down and and give us their time for a day, and not not charge us a penny. And and of course, when you get when when we came to you, when we we we, we said to ourselves, look, we need someone that can can get a room galvanised, and we thought of you. And as busy as you you are, and you've always been. We came down and see you, and you said, yeah. The first day we had you at Langdon Hills, in, down in Basildon, Mark, we put a night ticket on. We had Harry there. Oh, there we, you go. Yeah. we put 40 tickets straight on the minute we announced that we had Mark Brewer and we had Harry Redknapp. Now, that yeah. is that that is that that works. That that Without a doubt. We're lucky. We, we've got contacts in the sporting world. And the boys come down and, and give us their time for nothing. It's fantastic. But you never hear that. You never hear that side of the story, do you? No, no, of course. And um, Joe Hunt was joined us there. Look, Joe sent another lovely message. Um, if only there was more people like that, you're right there. And Joe, uh, Joanne Nine and Fink said, Can we give some details of your charity? Which we'll try and do that during the, yeah. uh, when yeah. we can. There well, we Joe, are. Joe, Joe's waitress, <laughs> Joe Hunt has come to. Joe's come down with the poet yep. and, and formed a four ball, hasn't they? Haven't they? Yeah. You. We tried to win. You yeah, no, you, do, you do. You have a go. If we, don't, if we don't win with my handicap, I believe we've got some ringers in that goal. <laughs> I, I can tell you. I, I, I think there's a few. Look, I think there's... Kenny Fee, I'm going to ask you to stay with us, but I'm going to talk to Ian and uh, I want you to stay. I want to come and bring you back for the last uh, 10 oh, minutes. Okay. No. Okay, so thank you. There we are. That is the wonderful uh, Keith Isaacs and a lovely family from the Potters, of course. The wonderful people. Lots of people have been sending messages and um, we will get to them. But I want to talk to uh, Ian Burfield as well. So, uh, um, Ian, thank you for joining us. And for those who are completely, completely unaware, the face, and of course, your, your, your beard is a bit of a disguise of your face because you're a well known sort of, well, I would say, one of those face actors that people go, I know that face. I recognize that. Where do I yeah, know I'd it? like to hit it. No, never. I don't believe it. But I mean, you played a bit of a nasty character in EastEnders, didn't you? As the, is it DCI Arthurs? I don't know. I've had so many different names on that show. I've, I've, I, they, the trouble is they give me two first names as well, like Peter Arthurs or Arthur Peters. Oh, I don't know who I am anymore. No, I'll tell you. Well, <laughs> I well, just, I'll tell I just, you what, just, just in case, um, um, Ian, I, um, let's show a tiny bit of a video that we've got. Um, thank you to Martin who sent me it of a little bit. So people go, who, who, who's, what, what are we talking about? Just in case, this is Ian in EastEnders. And a ton of you need to relax. I'm more comfortable than tense. You came to us, remember? You wanted a way out, and now I'm here offering you one. I only met you 30 minutes ago, and now you expect me just to walk away from everything I know, put my life in your hands. You want a little more time to think things through? I get it. But we're going to need another meet. And I'm going to need to see some paper. Any of you say that about me or my family again, I'll throw you out the window. Mr. Carter. Bad time. I grow down my local. Yeah, did you want something? Your presence down the station. Why? You already had the geezer that done it. You're referring to Dylan Box, he has an alibi. What, some pony about him being down a pig, yeah? You've been carrying out your own investigation. It's Pony. You? He was here. We have credit card receipts putting him there at the time. Yeah, well, anyone. And eyewitnesses credit card. placing him in the pub all night long. No, he was with me. Several of them. Yeah, well, they're lying, all of them. I'm not doing this here. Come on, down the station. You wait for me, we'll smack with you. We can do this the hard way yeah, if well, you like. Well, like that, because I, I ain't done nothing, so we've No, things. no, stop, I'm please, Mick. Like Just stay calm. Michael Carter, I'm arresting no. you on suspicion of the attempted murder of Stuart Highway. What? The old Bill were trying to catch the shooter as we speak. The pub will be open in a couple of days, and we're looking forward to seeing your beautiful faces at the bar. Isn't that right, El? Yeah. Yes, officer, what can I do for you? 
It's not you I'm here to talk to, Mr. Carter. It's your wife. Could you confirm to me exactly where you were last night at 1.25? But I'm going to need names and addresses of everyone who works here. Well, that's going to take a while. Okay, better get on with it then. I think we've just found our murder scene. Yeah, sorry, I, 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 what was the first clip, Ian? That was uh, a film called The International. All oh, right, you know, because Martin never told me what, what he said. He said the bits of you with from EastEnders and Vera. I think this oh. is his personal collection, you know. Martin Ruby Selling, looking good, your Burfield baby. <laughs> I know, he's a strange boy. <laughs> oh, God. he's an old, old, old friend. Old friend. You know, he's, a lovely, he's a lovely man. Yeah, he's got a heart of gold, heart of gold. Yes. Yeah. As he's told me that you did as well, Ian. So that's that's nice when you're that. Oh, so so good, Carol Wall is just saying. Yes, they were good. But how do you how do you cope? I mean, how do you get the uh I'm not saying that you love obviously acting. Um you met Martin in uh, One Man and Two Governors, wasn't it? Uh, at the yeah, Haymarket. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so acting, I would say, obviously is your thing. Um, do you prefer plays or, or TV. I, no, I, I love doing theatre because it is, I mean, it's the old cliche, it's a real buzz. You know, mm -hmm. you've got the immediate reaction from the audience. and. Yeah. But no, I, I just, I, I genuinely, it's going to be, so I hope there's no producers watching because I love doing it. And yeah. and I sit and watch people who get so caught up in the, I want to be famous and I want to be this and I want to be rich. And you go, actually, you do it because you love doing it. Yeah. And I genuinely, if I could do it, if I could afford to do it for nothing, I probably would, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, sadly, money does intervene. But I mean, yeah. How, yeah. Did you, how did you first get into it, though? I mean, who did you train with? I, uh, well, if you want the longest story, I, I trained, I did sixth form, I did A levels at sixth yeah. form, and I had no intention. There's no one in the family. Has ever done it before? I had no, no intention whatsoever. And I come from a tiny, tiny little village in South East Essex. Yeah. Um, called Holbridge. Yeah. And, yeah, no. uh, and uh, I, I wanted to be a journalist, quite frankly. <laughs> I love writing. Yeah. And I love the language. And I had no idea, absolutely no idea what I was going to do with myself. And I had a drama teacher at the time at A-level, a guy called John Supper, who can't have been more than six years older than me. Mm -hmm. And he came around with four beers one night and a piece of paper to sign and said, you're going to drama school. I said, oh, am I? He said, well, you can do it. You're okay at it. Let's go for it. And he kind of convinced me that it's what I should do, really. Yeah. Uh, I, got a, I got into drama school but didn't get a grant, so I faffed around for a year with councils and, you know, doing the odd jobs that people do. Got back here, got back into the same drama school, which was Mount View in oh, Mount was View. In, yeah, it was in North London. It's in Peckham now, apparently. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. yeah. I don't, um, I got but yeah, and I I literally walked I I, I genuinely uh, people have said to me, Oh, you know, you've had ambition. I don't think I'm that ambitious now. Well, I'm getting too old to be ambitious now. <laughs> I yeah. think you come to your senses slowly, don't you? Um but uh yeah, it was never any plans. I just got lucky. And, and does that mean you sing then, Ian? I mean, like, do, I sing? Like, do you sing or dance? I mean, no, Mount View. Uh, well, I mean, I dad dance now. I mean, we're probably of a similarish age. Um, I dad dance, you know, as much as little as possible. But I do love to get up and dance. I'm not a dancer no. by any stretch of the imagination. But I've singing was always something I wanted to do. I think singing is one of those things that it's confidence. Yeah. yeah, and I used to get up and do karaoke with absolutely no confidence at all, Car crucify every song I ever did. Yeah, and then I got very, very drunk one night and did it, and someone went, "Oh, that was all right." And you kind of go, "Okay, fair enough." It's like anything. I think if anyone says to you, "Yeah, you did okay at that," it gives you a bit of a boost. You yeah. know, I think that's the problem with the world. To be honest, I think you know, I I live in East London at the moment, um, and you walk down a road and you smile and say good morning to people, nothing. They don't even look at you. Don't smile. Mm. I'm not saying I can cure depression. I'm not saying I can cure anything. But I think if you walk past people and just go, morning, how are you? You look nice today. You smell good. You know, you, it just makes people feel a little bit better. Well, I'm terrible for that, Ian. I, I, I do exactly the same. And it's only because I've grown up with talking to guests and so many people and so <laughs> 
to actually sort of so when I go on the road I'm going walking down I'm smiling and saying hello to people and you can actually physically see like, why are they smiling at me what I know I know they, genuinely I think my missus always says to me what what I, I'll go down the shops or something and I'll be gone it's only a five minute walk around to the shops and I'll be back an hour and a half later and she go where, where have you been I said, well, there's this old fella sitting there. I said, I just had a quick chat with him. And she went, but I said, what do you talk about? I said, well, you introduce yourself. You say hello. What do you do? What do you do? And you're off. And you yeah. kind of, you, you find something in common. She wow. she crucified me years ago. We managed after a lot of scrimping and saving to take the kids when they were old enough to Florida, to Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was her birthday while we were there. So I, I, we got a little coach trip down to Miami to swim with dolphins for her birthday. Mm. We're sitting on the beach and there was a few beers and a bit of chocolate cake. And she said, oh, it's not a beer drinker. Can I have a gin and tonic? There was a, a hotel next door to the beach, 10 yards away. So I said, yeah, right. So I went and got her a gin and tonic. I came back two hours later. And she, <laughs> she said, where, where have you been? I said, well, I went into the bar and there's this little old American couple sitting in the corner. I said hello. And they said hello back. And said, what are you doing? Oh, we're here for our wedding anniversary. Oh, let me get you a drink. Boom. Off you go. Yeah. Hour and a half later. You know, what are you, what are you supposed to do? You never learn if you don't talk. I know, mate. But do you not fear that this COVID situation has really copped up that social side? Do you not think that everyone's... Uh, I don't know. I think if you, I think if you're social, you're social anyway. Or sociable, you're sociable anyway. And yeah. I'm, we're, we're kind of lucky because we... Well, getting back to what you're asking about singing, we sing the three of us, me because my boys have left home now, they're all yeah. huddled up to someone else. But my daughter still lives with us, uh, and we all sing in a rock choir in Walthamstow. Oh, right, cool, I love that. Um, and we've that's continued as as well as it can, um, on Zoom and everything. Yeah. But you know, we're fortunate because while everyone else on Zoom is sitting there in their kitchen on their own, there's three of us singing three different parts of the song, so we actually have our own little choir. Oh, essentially yeah. um and i sing in a band as well i joined a band two years ago we yeah. haven't had any gigs covid put paid to gigs <laughs> but we'll get there we'll get yeah. there do you not find the zoom we, we, we've tried that ourselves we're not just with pods but other choirs with joe joe nolan who, 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 who message there she did a world choir type thing and it was so difficult and martin you can't, you can't put it all together try to put all yeah. these and I said it was so difficult because people have got to try and get so many involved and then trying to get people to sing in the same tone, the same no, You key. can't do it. You can't do it. I mean, everything has to be muted. So, yeah, Lizzie, who's our choir leader, well, yeah. she'll be on all the time. And the rest of us just stay on mute. Yeah. Uh, and listen. Because and that, that's all you can do. But, it's listen, it gets you to see people that you wouldn't ordinarily see. Yeah. Um, it keeps you in contact. We're always on to the kids. Um, I try to keep in contact with people as much as possible and just think, right. well, you know, and when we come out, we'll get there. And well, I have to say, Joe and like Kathy, Katie, Big Kate actually did a, a world choir and they loved it. And you, you rightly so, you get to see so many people, you, you're actually socially meeting on, on the, the cameras, the Zoom. And, it, and it I'll tell you what, anyone who says, you know, what's it like being in a choir, you know, I'm not despite being on screen and, and what have you, I'm not particularly outgoing. I'm not a, an extrovert, particularly. Yeah. Um, you just, it's so nice. It's so oh, nice really? to sit. And, and, you know, we do songs that I wouldn't normally listen to yeah. quite often. But when you're singing in a group, it's just, it's incredibly uplifting. It's all, I'd, I'd recommend anyone who's, especially then, if you're low and you haven't got any confidence, because quite a lot of them will go, oh, I can't sing. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. I, I think it's something that people can do and naturally do and enjoy doing. Now, that's natural voices, isn't it, Lizzie? Lizzie Rhino, is Lindsay, it? Lindsay. Lindsay Renahan, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that's great. And it's, isn't it lovely to do something with your family? Sometimes. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> It, which one's the big singer then? Is it more your wife? Is it Sue, your wife? Yeah, how do you get all this information? <laughs> my, mate, my mate Martini sends me out. Mm, okay. What's Nigel showing us? Things of you. Oh, that's the, that's the IMDB page, isn't it? I can't even remember half that. Oh, my word. I'd have to look this, really deep into it. There's stuff on there I don't even remember doing. <laughs> get out of it. What's no, been your seriously. 
what's been your favourite part, Ian? What's your, what's, when have you said, oh, I love doing that? I watch, you know, I, I know you I love know. I, I just, I'd like to say, I enjoy doing it as long as it don't get too repetitive, like any job. You yeah. Know, I mean, I, I can't complain because for thirty-three years I've been employed pretty much, and it, I've. And that's fantastic. Yeah, look, I've played a lot of bent coppers and a lot of villains, and you know, sometimes they're a bit repetitive, but they've given yeah. me a career, so I can't complain. But no, I, one man, two governors was was a great crack because I'd never really done comedy before. Yeah. And. Um, I remember getting to the first night, and of course, you don't get it in rehearsals. You can't hear it or see it. Um, I'm sorry, this is endless, this list. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's boring. Um, I'm going to just turn the light on so you can see, because it's getting so dark here. Um, yeah. yeah, now I, uh, we, I remember going on the first night, standing in the wings. Yeah. And Gavin, who was playing the, uh, the lead, suddenly got this laugh, and it was like a tsunami. Oh, I bet this wave of laughter just came over, and you, and it took me breath away. Genuinely, took me breath away. And you suddenly go, Jesus Christ! I, I've yeah. never experienced anything like that before. And yeah, you know, we, I did it for a year, and yeah, there were a couple of nights where you go, oh, getting a bit bored now. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like any other job, it's it's a natural, it's a natural thing. But it was such a joy to do. And yeah. about, I think the bit, after that, really, I mean, I've enjoyed, I still enjoy the telly and, you know, there've been parts that have given me a real chance to do something. But I did, um, I was at Leeds Playhouse six years ago, I think. Yeah. Four years ago. Was that Great uh, Expectations? Great Expectations, yeah. Blimey, you know more and remember more than I do. Um, and it was just, I remember saying to one of the, one of the younger actors, I said, this is a real sort of gypsy group of people, you know, it was just, it just dragged people from different places and put them together. And it was such a great company. Oh, wow. And we just bounced off of each other. And it was, it was beautifully adapted and it was just a lot of fun to do. You know, you really felt like you were there. No. Um, it, sometimes the touring, the touring is, is exciting, isn't it? It's actually, but it's, it's, it's not easy. My daughter did um, Greece. She was playing Sandy. Um, no. Greece, Oh, but literally every day, literally moving on to the next theatre, or did sometimes two, two or three theatre, you know, two or three days at yeah. the same theatre. But the actual get up and get early and prepare, and sometimes it was two. Most times it was two shows a day in the theatre yeah. as well. So quite incredible. What are you showing me? Is that the uh, the one ma one man two governors? That's one, that's one man two governors on the left. That's so tiny, I can hardly see. It. Oh, no, I know, man. But yeah, no, it was joy, and that was when I was heavier. I mean, I should have done the before and after, like your first birthday guy, because I've lost five stone over the last year. Wow! And what was that? Was that literally dieting, or you know, my wife? Yeah, yeah. I joined. I joined. I was with some of the ladies in the choir who um, we used to go down the pub afterwards on a Wednesday night and sit, yeah. sit and drink lots of booze and complain about our weight, as nice. you do. And one of them said, "Oh, we've joined Slimming World," so I went, "All right, let's go for it." And I just, I really stuck to it. Um, I had a lot of focus. At the, oh, it's going to sound awful. I don't want to bring this down, but I was losing my dad at the time. Yeah. Um, so it gave me a lot of focus. And I just, without, I didn't starve. My missus would kept, kept walking past me while I was thinking, how much are you eating? Because I just have piles, but it would be the right food. Yeah. Uh, and I just got into it. I've become vegetarian by accident. And I hate to say it. It's an awful thing to say. It's a great incentive to go to Slimming World every Monday night and see people crying because they can't lose a few pounds. It sounds really vindictive, but and then you say, but then you say, um, well, what have you eaten this week? And I go, oh, I only had four pizzas and two cream cakes. And you go, what do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> what did, what did yeah. you think was going to happen? And I really did just go, that's it. Stick to what you do. And I'm still doing it. Um, and every time Martin rings me up, he goes, oh, if you're still looking good. As well, there's nothing stopping you. There's nothing stopping you. <laughs> well, Martin's probably lost an inch, I think. He's lost an inch there. Is he? Good. Yeah, that's what he says to me all the time. Rufus Hound, you've been, was you was with, performing with Rufus? Yeah, yeah, I did six months with Rufus. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's lovely. Yeah. And of course, he's he's sort of a, he's actually at this moment on dancing on ice. And uh, is he? I, I avoid that one. 
I, I bet you do. But he, he made a statement that caused a bit of a rumpus to uh, politically or something. He made oh, well, a couple of years ago about was it, what was it about? I can't remember. I don't know, but he made he, no. He made a little bit of a statement on uh, in the dancing on ice for getting the golden ticket, and yeah. then he, and he gets the golden ticket. This is only last the week ago. He goes, ah, oh, what? And they're saying, what do you think about getting the golden ticket? Well, I, I'd like the school children to get their meals. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's. Uh, I tell you what, there's a lot more to him. He's a very bright boy. Yeah, very much so. Very, again, very talented as well. Very talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I have no issues. It's a strange world because I'm not Rufus particularly, but especially in the acting game, you, you quite often hear people go, "Oh, they're a bit hard work." You know, they're not. They're a bit yeah. tough to work with. And I've never had it because I think at six foot two, and when you're a big lad, yeah, anyone who's awkward tends to treat you really well. <laughs> But also, like you probably, I go in and, and shake someone's hand and go, this is who I am, take it or leave it. If you don't like it, we'll walk away. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. much. Yeah. I'm, I don't I'm, need it. And what about, let's go, let me just go back to the fact that most people relate to EastEnders. Um, would you say, I mean, Danny is another guy who seems to play himself. Is that bad to say that as an actor? Uh, no, I, I, listen, I, we're in a world, unfortunately, where although it pre pre pretends to be quite radical, the acting game, yeah. Yeah. you're, you're pigeonholed very quickly yeah. uh, and you either run with that or you try and change it, but then you could find that you don't have a career. You know, there's very few people in this business who really get a chance to to shine, I think, you know, and that's, yeah. that's, not, in a bad, that's not a bad or a good thing or... It's just, it's the way it is, you know, for every, I'm always saying to people, listen, for every one person you see who makes it, yeah. there's another thousand just as talented who just didn't get a break. No. And, but what, and, what, do you, what do you do about that? Or you either sit there and worry about it or you just crack on. No, no, I get that, Ian. And, and like what you said, you've been very fortunate. I mean, 33 yeah. years and really been rarely out of work is quite incredible. And you've been doing some work in this lockdown periods as well. Not a lot, but I imagine you, you said you, you was EastEnders last Tuesday, wasn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Well, it did like, was it last Tuesday? I don't know. Days just go become nights now. <laughs> I don't know. I could yeah. be any day. But, um, yeah, no, I did. Uh, I've done EastEnders and I'm in the middle of doing a, a couple of days on Grantchester at the moment as well. Oh, no, that's great. Look forward to it. Are you playing yeah. a character or something we'll be able to look for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, um, it's a little bit different. The director's an old mate of mine who I, I've known for 25 years, um, very talented. And he just rang me up before Christmas and said, listen, it's not a huge part, but it's a bit different and I think it would be good for you. It's essentially a bloke who's – he's not really a villain. He's – 20, 15 years ago, he's killed his wife. But it was – it was a, it was an accident more than anything else. But he told the police it was his son, his fifteen-year-old son, and he's and he's stayed visiting his son in prison. But he can't bring himself to admit it was him. So yeah. there are these scenes where he kind of breaks down and comes to terms with the fact that it's him who's done it. Yeah. Um, and he's not a nasty man. He's just, he's a victim of his own destiny, you know, or his fate, whatever, you know. It's, no, I get it. So, mate. That's a little bit different, a little bit softer. Uh, so, and, you know, the tears come. So before you go, I mean, basically, Ian, you've given us advice to join a choir. Don't go into acting unless you just love it because you don't get much money. <laughs> no, listen, it's not even that. I mean, if you, I, I used to have, I used to teach in between jobs occasionally. Yeah. And I'd have kids go, oh, I want to be, I said, listen, I know some kids who will go out there and go, oh, I'm not doing that job because it's not. Take every job you can get at the beginning. Get yourself a CV together. And the thing is, if you don't take those jobs, you might miss the one that you really love. Yeah. Yeah, you no, know? I agree that. And, and, it, and it's, it's, it's who you meet as well. As you actually said, your director's an old mate of 25 years. And it's such yeah. important, such important side to it, to be nice, to be kind, you know, to who you yeah, meet. Absolutely. Well, what's the point in not? I mean, I, I know actors who are, you walk on set and people are like, oh, God, I don't want to work with them again. You think, oh, why would you want to walk on set and no one likes you? <laughs> That's yeah. mad. No, you might no. as well go and enjoy it. It's a yeah. gift of a job. It's a gift of a job.
Yeah, you're very fortunate. Ian, look, I really appreciate you coming on. It's, I a pleasure, mate. You know, it's been lovely to talk to you. Lovely to meet you. Uh, uh, you I'm glad the washing machine didn't get too loud. No, it didn't at all. But we must get you to come to Potter's and have a, a, a break, bring your wife, and hopefully, you know, we do get choirs come to us as well. And it'd be lovely. I'll talk to, I'll talk to Lizzie. It might be a weekend away for us. I know. Talk to Lizzie about that. And uh, Nigel produces one of our top directors. He's, he'll be trying to arrange that with us. But look, mm. I really appreciate it. That's uh, a pleasure, mate. We'll get together with Martin and we'll have a, a drink when we can get all social and all got our vaccinations. And it's very kind of you to uh, give your time up. Just to That's have a pleasure, mate. Lovely to talk. I've got plenty of it at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we're all there, mate. Take care. Keep losing your weight. Yeah. Enjoy it, mate. Lots of love. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Lots of love. Take care, mate. Bye. Thank you, mate. Oh, lovely guy. Lovely guy. And thank you, Ian and Keithy. Very briefly, we're going to bring Keithy back back on. Hopefully, sorry, Keith, you've been listening there. But, yeah, well, interesting. Yeah, it is, but not just that. I've got to say, like, um, you forget that we normally do our sort of when we do our uh, our charity events, we normally bring on people who are are more sporting, aren't we? If you think about it, we've always gone football wise, haven't we? Yeah. In fact, let me just read what Ian just Ian, you look great. Haven't done the same weight loss. I know it's hard. It is well done, well done. You'll be resting D nice Thompson in East Enders. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, but um, look. Um, why well, wanted you to stay? Jack's not with me, and that meant that I'm going to throw in the challenge of family fortunes before we go. Now you might not be watching, you might be watching, but we had um, the idea is the jackpot question, Keith. We give you five questions. You have 20 seconds to try and give me your best answers. You do not, uh, you know, I, I would normally take your first answer. But if it's a ridiculous answer, I normally stop the clock and say, that's stupid, fancy second like that. I'll give you another go. Now, losing at this moment is Jeff the Poet. He's got the worst score. Even, even Amber Hardy, who was ridiculous, was really bad. Hello, Ray Mitchell. I saw that you put a mention there. Hope you're feeling well. And... Uh, Hope you're getting feeling better as well because you've you've had lots of issues as well. Christy Sutcliffe getting a jab tomorrow. Well done, Jenny Money. Uh, make sure you do. Um, Mountview, by the way, that uh, Ian was from. I know Jack was at Mountview. Christine, thank you. Jack having a PJ day. Don't talk me. I will be discussing it with Jack Jenkins. Now he's been on BBC TV doing the the hosting. He doesn't come back on and say hello. <laughs> but. The web, the pressure's on. You get 20 seconds. All Five questions. Need, all you need is to get two top answers, not to be bottom. Okay. Okay. Jeff only yeah. got one top answer and three points. You get a point for an, to get, if you mention an answer that's in the top four, and you get five points for the very top answer, like you would. So, Keith, are you ready? Now, Go on. can you hear me, Keith? Because I know you've been getting issues. Loud and clear. Right, then here we go. Now you have 20 seconds. Are you ready? Yep. Right, it starts when I give you the question. Not that at the end of the question, not at the beginning. So I don't think, because sometimes I could take two days talk, telling you something, so I'm not. So here we go. Are you ready? Yeah, ready to go. I'm going to look at which one I should give you. Let, I'll give you an easy one. I'll give you the easy one. Right. I don't... Jeff Poet saying, no, wait a minute, you've looked, in, looked at and gave you an easy one. No, it's all about what you think of. Always think of the top answer. Let's go. Name something that goes well with custard. Apple pie. Well, stop the clock. Stop the clock. Who's talking to you? Who's giving you that answer? Joe's in the back of the room. Can you... Joe, that's <laughs> not the point. <laughs> Joe, I heard that, Joe. If you're going to be in the back, come forward and say hello and help him. Come forward. It's your birthday tomorrow, Joe. Happy birthday to you. Right. Hi. Hello, Joe. Happy 60th birthday, darling. Thank you. Right. So, anyway, do you want to keep apple pie? I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with apple pie. Okay. Can I tell you, Jeff had his wife kept giving him answers, and that's why he lost. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. That out. So you be careful. But only if you think it's the obvious answer. Right. Yeah. Let's start the clock. 
Once again, we've gone for apple pie. Right. Name someone whose advice you usually accept. Glyn Opke. <laughs> Stop the clock. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> how the hell? How the hell? <laughs> that's the most stupidest answer. I I Why would you? Because on my desk, on my desk, there's an envelope with his name on. <laughs> Glenn Hopkin. I mean, look, no. how am I going to have Glenn Hopkin a name? I mean, <laughs> is he a mate? Is he? A, yes. I mean, obviously, I know Glenn, and obviously, he's one of your biggest sponsors. Yes, a mate. Yeah. So, shall we say a mate, a friend, instead of a, Glenn a friend? Because that's the stupidest answer I've ever had. Uh, right. John Joe, Stewart. Joe, by the way, Joe, did you have a different answer? Yeah. What was it, M babe? Well, it would probably be Keith. Right, <laughs> husband or wife. So your spouse. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you want to keep? Keith, do you want spouse or would you like a friend like Glenn Ockin? Spouse. <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I've got a gun at the oh, back. Okay. You are so under the thumb, Keith. Unbelievable. Uh -huh. Right, I'm going to start the clock. Christine said a doctor. Thank you, Christine. A doctor. But uh, you went for uh, Glenn Hopkin. That is not going to get you nothing, but we changed it to spell. Right. Name a popular adult board game. Monopoly. Good. Name a place you had your first kiss. School. School. School? Brampton well, Manor. It's not that. And um, name a well known nursery rhyme. Bar Bar Black Sheep. Okay. Let's do it. Let's Have do it. Let's see, what, let's see what we got. Right. So, for a minute, I, I had the vision of that you was going to say on the lips when you said name a place where you had your first kiss. And then I thought, no, obviously. So you said school, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Right. Your first thing, um, something that goes well with custard, you changed, you said apple pie, thanks to Joe. That's and, fine. And it was the top answer. Top answer. So you have got five points. If you said crumble, pudding, or banana, I would have given you one point. But you got Good. five. Name someone who has advice you usually accept. I had to stop the clock because it was hilarious that you actually said, uh, Glenn, Glenn, who might get me a car if you ask him, if he's that yes. And uh, he probably would, actually. I don't ask him because he probably would. So, listen, you said spouse in the end, thanks to another nudge from Joe behind you. Yep. And spouse was the top answer. You've now got two top answers, thanks to Joe. Name a popular adult board game. Um, you said Monopoly. It wasn't the top answer. Scrabble, scribble, the pursuit was one point answers. Articulate. Is that too modern for you? Yeah. I don't what know. Do you where, articulate who gave you these answers? Crazy. What to do with you, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> you don't suddenly go like that. I'm just saying that's quite a modern answer, articulate. Yeah. But yeah. You know, Monopoly's up there. Monopoly's yeah. up there. Triple pursuit probably would have been a few years ago. Right. You said name the place you had your first kiss was at school. Yep. And you could have said disco. Was it a school disco? No. No? Okay. A car park or a park, a field, cinema. These are all the people who got one point. Um, and uh, you said school. Yep. And disco was a top answer. Right. You're talking about school, though, aren't you? Going to school. Oh, yeah. And yeah, absolutely. We do that. Unfortunately, you only get one. Name a well-known nursery rhyme. You said Barbara bar, Black Sheep. The top answer was... Hickory dickory dot. No, it wasn't hickory dickory. It's not even the top four. <laughs> Sorry, Mary, not in the top four. I had Incy Wincy, Mary had a little lamb, Humpty Dumpty, Bar Bar Black Sheep. Was there? Was there, but the top answer was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Sammy, I've got. So in the end, you got one, one, ten, twelve, twelve, thirteen. 13 points. There you go. 
What's Jeff? Jeff, 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 Jeff? Jeff only got eight. That do. <laughs> I mean, that is really bad. Jack and Jill's up there, isn't it, Christine? Yeah, it should have been, but 20 took a little star. So, Keithy, bless you for coming on and again talking to us. You're welcome. Uh, you celebrate uh, with Joe tomorrow. What are you doing for Joe tomorrow? Well, with with it's just the four of us. We're just getting some booze in and some food, and that'll be about it, mate. We were going away. We've had parties. We've I had know. everything. I've cancelled everything. I know. We had. We were coming to you. It's, you it's were coming to I know, mate. Who would have thought that that we're not actually open again and we're not doing our Facebook uh, social media weekend? Yeah, um, I'm going to say thank you to you. And also a great thank you to anyone who supports you know, um, yourself. I think I'm making noises now. I don't know where the noise is coming from. So I'm going to say a great big thank you to you. Thank you for turning up. Hello, Rob. And everyone, please have a wonderful time. Nigel for looking after you. Time. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. So close. Do the obvious. Wash your hands. Can West Ham win again? Yes, I think they're going to make. He's on a roll. We're on a roll. Lots of love to you. Right. Thank you, PC. Love to all the family. And to everybody else, have a lovely weekend. Don't forget, I'm talking to Greg Harlow on Monday, the loser in the World Bowl final. I'm losing an ammo. Lost. I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. Thank you, Nigel, for looking after us. And goodbye.